Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's sermon, we are going to be looking at the truth about Easter and seeing exactly where it came from and why we don't really celebrate it the way we should and don't really consider the things that God would have us to consider. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this day's sermon. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your glorious love in my life, Lord, and that you have allowed me to be a minister of your word. I want to thank you most graciously, Lord, and most posthumously for your salvation that you have so given by dying on the cross and being raised from the dead by the Lord God our Father. I want to thank you for all your grace and all your mercy, and I want to pray that you continue to lead and guide in this study today as we look into what exactly is Easter and what exactly is Resurrection Day and why exactly they are separate to some. As I thank you and praise you for all these things, Lord Jesus, I pray in your precious name. Amen. All right, so starting off this message, we have to really consider exactly what's going on. Easter is a Canaanitish holiday, quote unquote, of old, celebrating their false goddess of fertility, Baal Ishtar. That's her name, Baal Ishtar. The word Baal in the Canaanitish land and religion means Lord. So, Lord Ishtar. That might be very, very different from what you could have heard if you asked somebody else what Easter is. Baal Ishtar, she is and was a horrific creature that resembled a grotesque and giant rabbit-like being that laid eggs as the very symbol of fertility. Nothing in the Bible even remotely suggests that Easter was anywhere near or related to the day of the Lord's resurrection. Absolutely nothing. Before we go into that, the interesting thought is that Easter is Resurrection Day, and that some people just call Resurrection Day because they're splitting hairs, whereas The majority of us call it Easter because we we just know better. Uh, You know, the majority of modern Christendom calls it Easter. Easter and Resurrection Day don't even occur in the same month, according to the actual Canaanitish calendar. And what's interesting, too, is that the Bible only mentions the word Easter once— and you can't find it having anything to do, no matter how much context you read, no matter how, no, no matter how many chapters you read around it, having anything to do with Resurrection Day. In fact, let's go ahead and look at that. In the book of Acts, chapter 12, that's where we're going to turn. We're going to look at it in verses 1 through 4. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended them, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Interestingly enough, that just because it says, then were the days of unleavened bread, and then it talks about right after, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, and delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. This does not say what time frame or how long Peter had been imprisoned whatsoever. So immediately, because it says, then were the days of unleavened bread, which was the Passover for the Jews, which directly coincided with the resurrection of Christ, since Christ rose only a few days, three days to be exact, after the Passover of the year that he died. So they immediately assumed that. Easter could take place in April. That's absolutely possible because it was all based on the Canaanitish lunar months. 
But we're, what we're seeing here is that this is the only biblical reference or mention of the word Easter, and yet people use it without a shadow of a doubt as the name for Resurrection Day. The Bible knows the difference between the Passover and Easter. Easter here is mentioned because it was a Canaanitish holiday that was separate from the Passover. Or, why wouldn't it just say the Passover? Why wouldn't it just say the Passover? Easter is a modern English way of saying the word Ishtar. And that's what the holiday was for Baal Ishtar. Another interesting thought here is that in the translation, because this English that we have here in the New Testament was basically translated from Latin and Greek, we got Easter instead of just Ishtar, even though we could very well say that because the Greek and Latin w uh, way to say e uh, Ishtar was closer to Easter than it is to Ishtar. So that's why some people have totally forgot and neglected the fact that this is actually a holiday of separate origin and has to do with a pagan religion that worshipped sex and fertility and worshipped this Baal Ishtar. Easter was typically celebrated in May, but with some variance because it was based on the lunar cycle. It was based on that. And because the lunar cycle isn't an exact, you know, month by month, 30 days or so on uh, and so forth, there are variances in it, what days it would be celebrated. However, with that being said, with Easter being understood as a Canaanitish holiday, which is what we should be looking at it as. So why do we call it Easter? We call it Easter because there was a time Back in, the, back in the early empirical church, sometime 400 years after Christ ascended into heaven, they took upon themselves to integrate some, certain pagan ideals into the church in order to make it more readily available to Canaanitish folk and pagans alike. And that's why they would name holidays with certain specific times and time frames. This is, in fact, when we came up with the idea of when Christmas was or the birth of Christ. No one knows for sure when the birth of Christ actually was. There is very good evidence that it was in the ninth month of the Hebrew calendar, which, by the way, is December, to all you naysayers who believe that Christmas the birth of Christ has nothing to do with the actual birth of Christ in December. That's not actually necessarily true. And the reason why we can know that to some degree, we don't know for, for sure, is because when Mary was great with child, so she, she, she had a large belly with Jesus Christ very near his birth, that's when Augustus Caesar had called for all of the world to be taxed. And that's when she had to go with with her husband Joseph, to Bethlehem, their city of nativity, so that they could be taxed because you had to, at that time, go to your city of birth in order to be taxed correctly so that the records were kept and so that you wouldn't be thrown in prison, Roman imperial prisons, because you failed to pay your taxes. Resurrection Day came the Sunday, first day of the biblical week, by the way, is Sunday. That same Sunday after the Lord's Passover, the year that he died, which occurred on the Wednesday night of that year, the 14th day of the first month of the biblical year, which is April. The very first month of the biblical year is April. That's, that's absolute fact, and we'll see it very shortly here. But it happened on Wednesday night because they were supposed to eat in the evening. Now, Wednesday night for us, according to the biblical days, is actually Thursday. The evening and the morning are the day, and it goes in that order. So tonight, Sunday night, the night of the release of this video, would actually be Monday night. And then Monday morning would follow. So, our Wednesday night was actually Thursday night, and Thursday morning is when Jesus was taken. That's when he was crucified, 
is on Thursday, shortly after the Passover, the night of the Passover, Thursday night. Uh, it's it, confusing to us because we don't run by the biblical calendar. We also don't run by the biblical days. Um, in certain parts of American society and culture and cultures around the world, Sunday is the first day of the week and Monday is the first day of the week. However, biblically, Sunday is the first day of the week. Now, we can see exactly the understanding of when the Passover was to be and when the first month was made in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. So let's go ahead and turn there, shall we, and read exactly what God has to say about this situation. So Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 12 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him, unto him take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb." Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood, and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the house, houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden in at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn it with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, the it doesn't mention exactly right there, it does mention in these chapters, that the month that he names as the very first month is Abib. Abib in our calendar is April. April is the first first month of the biblical year, and it is the first month of the Jewish calendar, at least in these times and during those days. And with that understanding, we see that it was the 14th day of the month when the Passover occurred. It was very likely that Easter took place that year sometime either in early or mid-May. There is nothing to do with either. Uh, Easter and resurrection together, they don't have anything to do with one another. Resurrection Day is not Easter. Easter is not Resurrection Day. They are misnomers, and that is a misunderstanding. The Passover is always a set day. Therefore, Resurrection Day is biblically three days after. However, because of the significance of Sunday, which is the day that Jesus arose, and it is a day of great importance, and that's the reason why we also worship the Lord and come together as the church on Sundays, and that's how it's been since the founding of the church. But because of the significance of Sunday, we should be celebrating it on the Sunday directly after the Passover. Well, for instance, this year, Easter is occurring on the 4th of April this year. Whereas the Passover would be taking place the 14th of this month. And then the Sunday directly after should be the Sunday at which we worship Resurrection Day, if we were going to put a date to it. There is no actual date yearly for it. There was a date almost 2,000 years ago when it occurred. And that's when Resurrection Day occurred. And the reality is that not only should we be worshiping Resurrection Day one time a year, but all the time. In fact, the Bible is very clear that the whole reason why we take communion, 
why we eat at the Lord's table, we take of that that bread and we drink of that cup, is to remember the, the Lord's death till he come. We are celebrating the resurrection every single time we take of that Lord's table. So it is very odd to me that it it's such a big deal to to the Christian world that we celebrate this Easter, quote unquote, resurrection day, one time a year, and we don't really put emphasis on it any other time of the year oftentimes. Now for me and myself and my family, my household, I will not do this. I will celebrate the resurrection all the time. I will recognize when the resurrection day occurred, but I'll celebrate it all the time because it is important to remember what exactly we're Christian for. We're Christian because we have been saved by that salvation Christ gave, gave us with his own death, burial, and resurrection. We should celebrate Jesus and him alone on this most holy of days. Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 9 is the resurrection. Let's read it. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, so Sunday, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. Amen. Praise the Lord God Almighty for his holy resurrection, and this day of days that is beyond compare. For without it, we would have nothing, and we would be nothing in this pointless, purposeless world. And what we also see is that the representation of the resurrection in the gospel. And we can see this, we can see this very well in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Let's go ahead and turn there, shall we? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the, this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Christ died and was buried according to the scriptures, and rose again according to the scriptures. That is what we celebrate Resurrection Day for. That should be all we are celebrating. Not some rabbit, and not her eggs. Baal Ishtar, move aside, step aside for the Lord Jesus Christ, and bow the knee. Worship God and Him alone, Christians. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today as we took a great look into Easter and its true meaning and the Resurrection Day and its true meaning. As we really just, we need to put aside the misconceptions and the falsehoods in Christianity, modern Christianity especially, that have been so readily accepted because of religious tradition and really get to the heart and to the meat of the matter 
It is, in fact, the whole reason why I believe God has called me to do this channel and to give these messages, these sermons, and these studies is because people are sorely lacking the truth of the Word of God. I want to thank you yet again for joining me, and I hope I'll see you next time. Have a blessed Resurrection Day.